Jacob, what are you doing? Running late for curfew? What are you doing? I'm making a late night sandwich like your grandma doesn't like me to. <laughs> your secret's safe with me. Mm -hmm. Same. So how was your party? Lame. I don't get what's so special about New Year's. Oh, what's special about New Year's? Yeah, I mean, you stay up late, everyone says, Happy New Year, and then a ball drops. Let me tell you something. I remember a year uh, you were just born. It was a very difficult year. You may not believe this, but there was no toilet paper to be found anywhere. Gross. Well, that wasn't even the half of it. People couldn't shake hands, they couldn't hug. You didn't want to leave your house or you're afraid you might get sick. And masks, everyone was wearing masks everywhere. You couldn't tell if somebody was smiling or frowning. That sounds weird. You, you couldn't go visit with family. Not even at the, the holidays, you know? Then what happened? Well, that's the best part. Then God got us through it, just like he always does. That's why I like new. See, God says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. New, my dear, gives us a, a different perspective on things. Like on toilet paper, I guess. <laughs> I mean, just because it's new doesn't mean it's gonna be good. You're right, you're right. That is why we hold on to the words of Jesus, who said, uh, in this world you will have troubles. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. That boop is why we celebrate new. Hey, Grandpa. Mm -hmm. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Do you want to hand or turkey? Oh
If your church has been around long enough, they've probably got one of these hanging on their wall somewhere. It's a painting of a shepherd and a sheep. Well, lots of sheep. Uh, beautiful green pastures, still waters. It's quiet, it's peaceful. It, it's all of that. But have you ever tried to steer a sheep? All right, time for dinner. Come back. No, it's okay. You guys, wait. We're friends. Why do you run? Hey, don't get smart out with me, all right? All right, someone's getting the shears. And if I'm to be honest, sheep, they're dumb. I don't know if you've heard. No, they're just not as smart as other animals. No, they're dumb. Like walk off a cliff just because it's there, dumb. All right, do you want me to take you out to pasture? Because I will take you out to pasture. No, no, come back. Karen, no, Karen, over here, over here. Goodness gracious, they're just stubborn. Skittish, too. Fearful little things. Oh, don't be like that. Do you want me to get the shepherd's hook? Do you want me to get the shepherd's hook? Hey, hey, I'm the one that feeds you. Hey, don't ignore me. I think I get kids ministry now. Fine. I love you. You ever wondered why Jesus called us a sheep? Kind of a bitter pill to swallow, huh? But if we were to closely examine our lives, look at all the messes that we make, how fearful we are, how fickle and wayward we can, well, if I can just put it bluntly, how dumb we can be, we are sheep. Yeah, sheep, that's about right. <laughs> but thankfully, God sent us a good shepherd, someone who will be gentle with us when we are far from home, someone who will be firm when he needs to be. Doesn't it say everything that God picked shepherds to send the good news of Jesus' birth and that right there should remind us of his shepherd in ways right off the bat. That first Christmas, it was a sign of peace with God for all eternity. And our shepherd, he paid the price for that peace, the highest price. I don't know about you, but this Christmas, it means so much to me that I have a good shepherd. Christmas season of, of Ad, as we thought about Advent and into the Christmas season, we've really focused on the different aspects uh, of the Christmas story and their significance. You know, when we think about the shepherds, and as was just mentioned at the close of that video, you know, the peace that we have with God is only possible because of our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we start into a new year, 2023 is here, whether we want it to be here or not, uh, you know, the, the aspect of peace is very important uh, to us as believers. And I think it's something that we need to maybe spend a few uh, moments together this morning kind of focusing on uh, as we think about it. When you think about the shepherd, you know, when, when the shepherd's actually with the sheep, all that they worry about is taken care of because the shepherd is there to watch over them. He, he, he cares for them. He watches over them. He thinks of takes care of everything. In the biblical days, uh, and when you think about the shepherd and the sheep, keep in mind that, you know, the shepherd actually lived with the sheep out in the fields. Uh, it wasn't a matter of just letting them go on their own, so on and so forth. So that shepherd knew everything about them. Probably named them all. Uh, had, you know, Bob, Bert, Bernie, who knows what the names of the sheep may have been. Uh, but he was very, very involved in their life. And the shepherd nurtured them, he guided them, uh, took care of them, all of them. He's always had his eyes on the sheep. So when we think about the image of a good shepherd in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you think about the image of, of a shepherd, always remember, it kind of stirs emotions of, of care, provision, somebody who is really, really concerned about you. 
And as you come into this new year, the real peace that we can have as Christians really only comes because we know the Good Shepherd. And just as you think about the imagery of the shepherd in the Old Testament, uh, think about the imagery of the Good Shepherd uh, in our lives. So this Christmas season that just concluded, and we think about it in terms of, of, of the new year, the Good Shepherd already arrived. Amen? Uh, he's here. Uh, the Good Shepherd is the Lord Jesus Christ, and He arrived on the scene. And, and whether we, we think about it, when you think about the imagery of that, of that shepherd, if the sheep falls into a crevice, you know, the hook on the, the staff is used to pull them out. Think about all of the care, uh, the water, all of the things that are involved in a shepherd, and then relate that to the Good Shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's interesting, uh, when the Good Shepherd arrived, uh, he was born in what city, church? I guess you all did stay up and watch the, the Miss Bill Bowl last night. Yeah, in Bethlehem, and that is the city of who? David. And when you think about David, you he's arguably wrote many of the of the most well known psalms in the scripture. And and one of them obviously is Psalm twenty three that talks about the shepherd. Psalm 23 depicts God as, as a good shepherd who is leading us, uh, giving us, if you would, uh, the light that, that is pleasing not only to him. And so this is a passage of peace. When you think about Psalm 23, think about those that are weary, uh, the times that we're weary in our lives, the times when things are a little bit difficult, uh, whether it be all of the aspects of, of care that are mentioned in the psalm. But when you think about this psalm, always remember it, it offers comfort. Uh, quite often uh, at, at funeral services, as sad as they are, we read Psalm 23. Why? Because it reminds us of the good shepherd who cares about us. So um, if you want to turn to that passage, fine. Uh, Brother Todd's going to read Psalm 23 for us. Just remind us of the words of this passage this morning. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Precious psalm, isn't it? Would you notice for, for me real quickly, look at verse 1, uh, or just remember the words of verse 1, right at the very beginning. What is the personal pronoun that David uses when he refers to the shepherd in verse 1? My. My. You know, it's very important to understand. The, the word shepherd that David is using here, uh, this is one of those metaphors, if you would, uh, one of those words that uh, is, is used probably, this is the first time that we see this type of, of description of God in the Psalms. And it's very, very interesting as David does all of this and he talks about the Lord. He says, He's, he is my shepherd. It's a, it's a very intimate relationship. It's not, David doesn't refer to himself as a shepherd, does he? He refers to himself basically as one of the sheep, which is what we are. And, and David is pointing out, he's identifying himself here uh, as, as one of the sheep and You'll notice again in verse 2, he talks about that shepherd that leads him beside the still waters. We've talked about this before, but uh, with sheep are very, very much afraid of running water. Um, and if they fall in, obviously, as they would get wet, then they, they, they very easily could drown. So what the shepherd does is make sure that he takes them to a place where they can have still waters. Oftentimes he would build rocks and so on to slow the water down so that they had a little pool of water that they could actually drink from. Think about, think about the care of the shepherd that David's talking about here in Psalm 23. What is the significance to you? You know the good shepherd. Amen? Amen. 
you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you know the good shepherd. So the significance to you and I, when we think about not just this psalm, is that you know God is, is he knows everything about me. He knows everything about you. Now, sometimes that scares you, does it not? But on the, on the other side of it, to, to be reminded that God knows every detail about your life. He, he knows where you're going to be going this afternoon. He knows the things you're going to be going, going through this week. He knows the things that Brother Tom Stubridge is going to be going through this week. He knows, he knows the hurt that many of you have here in this church body because of those that you've lost. He knows, he knows all of these things about you. And if he's truly your shepherd, keep this in mind, he's going to spend time with you. He's going to nourish you. As this psalm talks about, he's going to take care of all of those aspects. He always has his eye on you. Don't ever forget that. When you talk about the good shepherd, he cares for you. He cares about you. You've never been abandoned by God, church. And aren't you grateful for that? that? That's what the good shepherd is all about. He's concerned about you. He's concerned about your welfare. Notice there in verse 4, he even talks about the fact that you're never alone. And when we think about this Christmas season, so to speak, we talk about Emmanuel, do we not? Which means what? God with us. So that's, that's the significance of the shepherd. And I, I want to share with you this morning uh, two aspects of the promises of the good shepherd. And the first one is a lesson to the children of Israel. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34. If you're using a pew Bible and you need it, it's page 998. 998. Ezekiel chapter 34, as you're turning there, the, keep in mind the Jewish uh, people were exiled in Babylon. They, they, were, they were under the the uh, control of the Babylonian Empire. They're very discouraged. And when you think about what's gone, taken place, their nation's been destroyed. So they lost their homes. They lost their businesses. They had a lot of family members that were slaughtered. A, a lot of their close relationships uh, that were scattered throughout the nations. So they were really, really discouraged. Um, we could liken that to present-day Ukraine and what's happened to that nation of people. The same thing has taken place here with the children of Israel, and there's all kinds of hopelessness, despair going on in their lives, and so God uses Ezekiel to share a very important message to them here in Ezekiel chapter 34. So uh, if you would turn with me down to verse 11, just go down to verse 11. We're going to read just a few verses through verse 16. Notice what Ezekiel shares with the children of Israel as they're going through this difficult time. And he talks about the shepherd. Okay, so he says, beginning in verse 11, Thus says the Lord God, Indeed, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. I'm going to pause here for just a minute. Uh, as we're going through this passage, notice the phrase, I will. Okay, it's used repeatedly in these few short verses. So he's talking about the Lord God. He says, I will search for my sheep I will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day he is among his scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, in the valleys, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in good pasture, and their fold shall be on the high mountains of Israel. There they shall lie down in a good fold and feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away, bind up by the broken and strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong and feed them in judgment. Do, do you, can you grasp what's going on here with, with the children of Israel? If you look back uh, to the preceding verses in the chapter, as you would just kind of glance at them, Ezekiel is, is letting the children of Israel know that there are a lot of irresponsible shepherds. There are a lot of people 
who leads you down the wrong path. And he says, I will not be that. I'm the true shepherd. So as you think about Psalm 23, and you think about the shepherd that David is talking about, we're going to look in John chapter 10 in just a few moments. We're all familiar with the term, the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. As you think about that, think about what's going on here and all that's happening to this scattered herd of sheep and all of the difficulties that they're having. Think, think, about, think about all that has happened to them and notice what he says back up to verse 10. Uh, at the very end of talking about these irresponsible shepherds, here's what God says. I will deliver my flock from their mouths that they may no longer be food for them. What's he talking about? He's talking about these shepherds, these people that were taking them down a wrong path, who was not caring for them, not watching over them, and God says, I will deliver them. That was the promise to the children of Israel. Now here's the great news for you and I. Go to John chapter 10. Because when we think about what God did or said that he would do and care for the children of Israel, think about all that, that has transpired. I, I would share with you just a couple of verses as you're turning into the Gospel of John chapter 10. God himself, and we're reminded throughout the Scripture, Matthew 20, 28 says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life as a ransom for many. God says this through Isaiah, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, because I am your God. I will strengthen you, yea, I will help you, I will uphold you with the right hand of righteousness. So, you know, God throughout Scripture reminded the children of Israel how that he would care for them. Church, we're starting a new year. I don't know about you, but 2022 was quite turmoilous. Is that a word? How about it was full of turmoil? <laughs> okay? In our lives, certainly in our country. When we look forward to 2023, where does our peace come from? How can we have peace with all of the turmoil that's going on around us? Some of you have turmoil in your lives, in your own families. Where does that peace come from? Well, notice what John chapter 10 has to share with us, okay? This is the passage of scripture. Uh, it's called talking about the good shepherd, but you'll notice uh, this is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. So just as the promise to Israel was given by God, this promise is also given to us. So notice if you would here in the gospel of John chapter 10. I, I received a very special gift at Christmas um, from my daughter and uh, this is the English Standard Version and those of you that maybe recognize this, this belonged to Lee and uh, one of the things that I really like about this version, uh, the English Standard Version is, is very very good in giving just giving a, a, a good rendition of this passage so follow it there in your Bible if you would uh, in John chapter 10 I'm going to read for you uh, from this version because I really like how it's, how, how it's put. Beginning in verse 1. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man's a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Keep in mind, in the Old Testament, when the, the children of the description of the shepherds, not just so much the Old Testament, but all of that, the land of that day, they built the corral. Remember, they would build a corral, sometimes out of stone if they were out there. Uh, sometimes they would have uh, used trees and brush and so on. And that's where the sheep would sleep at night. They had one door, one entrance. Catch the picture here. One door. And so the shepherd would sleep across the entrance of that door at night. Now keep in mind, what would that provide? For protection, watch care, all of the things that are going on. As the wolves would come and try to come into the fold, the shepherd would be across the door. Catch the picture? See how God does that through using what was going on in that day? And now let's take it again into this passage, okay? He says, the thief comes, so think about that in terms of the wolves and those that are ravenous trying to destroy the sheep. Uh, when you think about the shepherd out in the field, 
here we are in this life as a Christian. And there are those that will try to destroy what's going on in your relationship with God. Okay? Satan, Satan, he's already defeated, amen? But he's still around, still working. So don't think that he's just going to give up. We know that's not going to happen until God finally judges and sends him into the lake of fire. So you've got to remember this. The thief is still trying to destroy the believers, still trying to destroy the church. Um, we were talking about this over the last uh, couple of days with some guests that are with us. Now, uh, the Logans are here. We also, Dina was here. And one of the things that kept coming up in our conversation is how the church has really been destroyed across this country and even around the world because of COVID. Satan used that to destroy many churches. And it's sad. It really is. So remind, be reminded, Satan's not going to give up, okay? Even though he knows he's defeated, he's not going to give up on you. He's still going to try to destroy you, all right? That's the negative part, all right? Here's the positive. We continue on. He says, but he who enters by the door is the what? The shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice. He calls them how? Church, by what? Name. By name. He leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. A stranger they won't follow, but they will flee from them, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. Now that last part of verse 6 is rather interesting. Why didn't they understand? Even the disciples had a hard time understanding this. You know why? Because just like us, they were dumb sheep. We don't, we don't get it all. We don't understand it all. And sometimes, you know, we go through life, do we not? And, and this image, if you would, of, of the sheep and, and the, if you would, the character, the trait. Uh, they need care. They need leadership. We need that uh, in our lives. Um, let, let's be honest, you know, not only do we make mistakes over and over again, sometimes we learn from them, sometimes we don't, you know, but sometimes we just, we need some help <laughs> in life. You know, we have the Lord Jesus Christ living inside of us and the power of the Holy Spirit, but if we don't draw upon that help of the shepherd, we're just going to mess things up. How many of you have ever messed anything up, even as a Christian? You know, lots of us. When do the sheep thrive? When, when do they do the best? Psalm 23, Ezekiel. When, when, do, when do the sheep thrive? They thrive when they let the shepherd do his job. We go through life trying to do things on our own, trying to handle all of the aspects of life, forgetting that we have the good shepherd. And, that, and that's what I want you to be reminded of as we think about not only this new year, but think about how can I have this peace that God promises throughout scriptures. Uh, I, they'll thrive, I'll thrive, when I realize that the shepherd loves me in a crazy, great way. He doesn't want anything to affect you in a negative way. He wants us to learn. That's what Hebrews teaches us many times over. We learn from the things that happen in our life. But the shepherd, he, he cares about me. He wants to provide for me. I need to understand the significance of him calling them by name. This is my Jesus. He's your Jesus. He's your Lord. Right, church? So it, it's a personal thing. As David said, the Lord is what? My shepherd. So when, when you think about this year and you think about all of the things that are going on and all the turmoil that's around us, my peace has to come from the Good Shepherd. So what's the key? The key to all of that is understanding who is the object of your faith. We've talked about this in the past. Okay, it's not so much when we think about faith, sometimes we think about that's, that's me. Listen. The only way we're going to have the peace that we want and the peace of life, if you would, in, as a Christian, is when we realize who the what the object or who the object of our faith is. 
and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Now he picks that up, go back to verse 7. So Jesus continues to teach, and he says to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Everybody or all who came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. Remember the picture of the shepherd in front of the, of the, of the uh, corral? I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they might have what? Life and have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Who, he that's a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, he sees the wolf come in and he leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Jesus continues, I, he says, am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. Church, one of the, one of the most encouraging things is when we realize that the object of our faith is the key to all of that, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's your shepherd. Think about all of the aspects of the care of the shepherd that David talked about. That's who the Lord Jesus Christ is for you. So, in spite of all the turmoil that we may have experienced in the past year, when we think about the new year, where does my peace come from? It comes from keeping my eyes focused on the good shepherd. And as the Lord Jesus Christ works in our lives, he's the key. And that's part of God's character. Think back to Psalm 23, verse 2. Okay, you got that verse in your mind? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Then he says, what does he do when it comes to the still waters? Do you remember the phrase? He leads me beside the still waters. That's very significant for the believer. It's not pushing. All right? He doesn't drive them into that. And Jesus says that here in the Gospel of John chapter 10. He, he is leading. He is leading the believer. He, he's he's bring, bringing them even beside the still waters, all of those aspects of the Psalm 23. But listen, church, if we can keep the focus on the shepherd and who he is, that will enable us to have the peace that we really want in the new year. Does that mean we won't have any problems? It'd be nice, but that's not going to happen. But I, as long as I, I keep my focus on the shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so the question is, do you really know the shepherd? Maybe you're here today or you're watching online and, and there's never been a time where you've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. You've never recognized the sinfulness of your life. I mean, you know about it. But the truth of the scripture is that Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sin. Isaiah 53, 6. All we like sheep. We, they, we know we, they've gone astray, right? We turned our own way. And the rest of that verse says what? The Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. So when you think about the shepherd... Think about not only all of his care, all of his provision, but more importantly, church, more importantly, folks, Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin. And so that's something we rejoice in as a believer. But if you're here today and you've never, you've never taken that step where you've said, Lord, I want you, I, want to be I believe on you, I, I want you to, to take away my sin. I want to have that walk with you. Today is a great day to do that. Any day is, but today is a great day because you're here or you're hearing that. Maybe you're a believer here and you're struggling. Um, can I just remind you, the shepherd will care, well, will care for you. Um, he's here to comfort you. He's here to encourage you. But you know what else, church? He uses all of us for that same purpose too. So as a church, we aren't the shepherds. We're just a bunch of dumb sheep. 
But you know what? The dumb sheep kind of gather together too. All right, so if you're struggling right now, you're at the end of that cliff, as the video has talked about, know this, the good shepherd is there to care for you, is there to encourage you, and God uses this church to do that in your lives too. So may this year be a year of peace in our hearts as we walk through all of these things in life and, and understand that Jesus Christ is present with us and, and be reminded about that all the time. The peace of the shepherd is yours. It's there. So as you think about how God works in your life and you think about the sheep, let's follow him. <laughs> that's where the peace will come from. You know, that's where the guidance will come from. And as we see what God's going to do, great things in our midst as a church and as individuals this year, um, be so grateful for the Good Shepherd. Amen? You know, focus on Him. And uh, the promises are there. Uh, he'll care for us, even as He has for the children of Israel uh, throughout their journeys, as we read about in the Old Testament. But certainly today for us is the Good Shepherd. Uh, he's here to guide you day by day. So let's not do it on our own, all right? Let's follow the Lord. Father God, I pray that you would just encourage us uh, in this year. And, and I would just help us to understand that the peace uh, that passes all understanding comes from you. You, you are the object of our faith. And you're our shepherd. And, and because you're our shepherd and you're the good shepherd, you care about us. So help us, Lord, to be reminded of that. Help us to keep our focus on you. And uh, then encourage us. Uh, Father, there are, there are many in our midst even today, uh, those that are perhaps watching online, who are struggling. They've got things that are difficult in their lives, and they, they need to be reminded of your presence. Father, encourage us as you care for us, and we'll give you thanks for all that you'll do in our lives. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. amen.